Hey guys, I'm Doug, this is Eric. We are DD in the garage. We are very much not in the garage today. We are at the Jacob Javits Center in New York City, scenic New York City. And we are getting ready to head into the New York car show. Uh, this will be the closest either one of us ever get to a new vehicle. That's for darn sure. That right there is porn for Eric. <laughs> Alright, this is where the party is. You see that? That's a goddamn renegade. Holy heck. <laughs> yeah, right? Alrighty, this is where the party's at. This is where Jeep is. My Cherokee would make it up there. Alright, let's see what the new Cherokee can do. I like the back ends of these. They change the design for the tailgate. Go ahead. You can do it. Oh, trail off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, look at the back end. That looks so much yeah, better. Yeah, it looks pretty one. nice. I'll give him that. Let's see what the wank was doing down there. I like how they have the lights on the outside. That's a new design too. And they're LEDs, right? Yeah. So that's going to be the new Wrangler JL. I'm not sure I'm on fault on this LED. I got LEDs on my pouch. I don't like them. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of LEDs. I mean, clearly the Wrangler's doing it. Yeah. So that's your new JL. That's what you guys have to work with now. If you want to buy a new Wrangler, I mean, I don't hate it. That's the Rubicon, of course. You go your trail all Grand Cherokee. As you know, we are a Grand Friendly channel. There's that front view camera right there between the. Yep. I mean, she looks good. She looks good. I like the Trackhawk badge. The new compass, right? Yeah, the new Trailhawk compass. I'll be darned. If you haven't seen our podcast about uh, the Jeep Wave and why vehicles like that deserve the Jeep Wave, you now understand why. <laughs> Try to do that with any uh, car that is in the Compass's class. This Renegade's about to kill it. I like the Renegade. People give it a lot of uh, a lot of slack. There she go. Yeah, man. I mean, considering it's basically a Fiat 500, it's a pretty capable Fiat 500 right there. You can say what you want about the compass, but... See this Wrangler do what Wranglers do. Be your new uh, JL Wrangler. Oh, you see that articulation? I love it. Nothing looks better than a solid front axle. Let's see this Renegade do this thing. This is the Renegade. I mean, the Wrangler looked like it had its mouth full with this obstacle. Come on, Renegade. You can do it. That's crazy. That is impressive. I'm sold for a commuter car. Absolutely. All right, last one. Let's watch the Cherokee do it. Trail Abu, Cherry, he almost didn't make it. Alright, what have we learned? If you're gonna buy a new Jeep, get the Trackhawk edition. How do we get this job? I wanna do that. Let me I drive. Just, I wanna be the guy that just drives around in a circle doing obstacles all day in a brand new Jeep. Flip it. That guy's living the life. Open it. <laughs> there's nothing better looking than the articulation of a solid front axle. Really, there is. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> oh, someone up that. There's someone up that. They open up that. Look at that thing. <laughs> That's sketchy. That's sketchy, man. And that compass. Is that new WK2? That's what you ordered. <laughs> Impressive. Oh, Get that. Can't even see the little guy. There he is. Look how back the back suspension is. That's crazy. 
Yeah, man. Yeah. Eric and I are fangirling out a little bit. We're both we're flushed. We need to take a break before we go into the rest of the show. Yeah, coming off a G pie right now. Yeah, absolutely. All right, <laughs> let's bring it down a little bit. We'll go look at some Toyotas to calm down. Problem is, it's still a Camry. Blistering fast. These idiots are out here trying to make Toyotas look cool. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I'm not buying it. All right, clearly Jeep, uh, you know, steals the show for us, but a Roush F-150 is probably a close second. Oh, yeah, Raptor is a Oh, yeah, we're going to be checking out the Raptor next. I don't like those rims, though. No. Why do they always... Aren't, why are big rims so awesome on off-road vehicles nowadays? All right? Metal don't save you off-road. Rubber does. Because a normal Raptor wasn't badass enough, they had to send this one to Roush. Holy Halliburton. Oh, yeah, buddy. Thing just looks nasty. New Ranger. I've been waiting for this for several years. I love the Ranger. I had a little four-cylinder Ranger. Man, that thing killed. I think it was a mistake when they took this thing away. But it's back. It is back. Got some tow hooks on the front. I mean, it's big. A Ranger today is the size of an F-150 years ago, but... So apparently the Ranger is going to get a 2.3 EcoBoost. That's crazy. It's two cylinder. No, no, it's four, not two cylinder. It's four cylinder. Sorry, I couldn't count. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. I wonder if it's a remake of the original 2.3. Once again, I don't believe there's any replacement for displacement, but Ford clearly knows what they're doing. These EcoBoost motors. Got the new Denali. How is it in there, buddy? It's actually really comfortable. Yeah? And pretty plush. An old dash is covered in nice leather. Nice stitching. Oh, yeah. Look at this bad boy. GMCs are old men trucks, and I, that's not a bad thing. It just is what it is. Like I'm already old. I want this thing. When you're tired of a rough suspension and you don't mind paying an extra 10 grand for it, you go out and you get the GMC. And I respect that. This thing's nice. You guys remember Eric's plow Jeep? When the plow Jeep has nightmares, this is what it's dreaming of. Holy heck, look Guys, at this thing. Don't get me wrong, this thing is probably boss at plowing, but for people doing driveways, this thing's shit. It's too big, too long, can't do it. And we'll do it, it's but you'll take truth. a lot of time. I mean, it's awesome. Like, look at that thing. You could clear the, uh, some ice road trucker stuff, but you're not, gonna be, you're not even gonna fit in either of our driveways with that thing. I don't care though. This thing is pretty it, gnarly. It's badass. I like the bear back. I guess this is the uh, Alaskan edition. Look at that bear. Oh yeah, I'd fight that bear. We got the uh, 100 year anniversary Colorado. That's a pretty cool badge. I know people are gonna argue this, but I just, I agree, man. This is what happens when you drop stuff in an aluminum bed. This is what happens when you drop stuff in a steel bed. All right, Ford? You make cans out of aluminum, you don't make trucks. I know, all the Ford guys are going to be all over me, but it doesn't yeah, rust. Ford, it's lighter. Ford changed their car. I'm not about it. Here come the men in black. Look how long that thing is. That's suburban. Yes, it's suburban. Oh, it's got the fold away uh, side steps. Side steps. For a car that has maybe, what, nine inches of <laughs> Yeah, right? Thank God you have the side steps, though. You don't want to break an ankle falling out of it. This is why Chevy's better than Ford. V8. Eight cylinders. I don't care about your gas mileage. I want eight cylinders. Leave the turbo on the Honda. Hell yeah. That's what I'm saying. All, uh -huh. the, all the Ford Tard ones are EcoBoost, got four turbos yeah, and two cylinders. Oh, wow. I dig it, man. I'm, I know the EcoBoosts are good, but eight cylinders. Eight. Count them. There's eight of them. Look at this. Holy. Yeah, give me one. This thing is a monster. Oh man, how much do you think it costs to build a truck like this? You gotta get the truck, it's 50 grand. Try 70. 70 grand. 
track system alone is probably another eight to ten, if not more. Yeah, I mean that's a heavy duty one. That's not like some home gamer thing. Uh, I'd see this truck probably into all total hundred thousand dollar truck. Hundred thousand yeah. at least. That's crazy, man. And it's Diesel. now one you can buy from Chevy. That's the funny part. Yeah, you can't buy this. You have to build this. Get out in the garage with your screwdrivers and your tinker toys and get to work. What the flying is that? Holy, come on. Oh, Toyota, that's so cute. You put little red tow hooks on it so it looks like a Jeep. <laughs> this thing. Oh my gosh, come on, man. Jeep, or Toyota, stop stealing Jeep's ideas, all right? I don't know, they're weird. They're like some weird design. Good years, apparently. Gotta be a concept tire. That's what that's what that is. Yeah, that thing's pretty weird. Then again, this whole thing is pretty weird. I'm sorry, Toyota. If you want me to take you seriously, stop doing stuff like this. That is friggin' hideous. Oh, it's everybody's favorite. The Giants and the Toyota. Friggin' great. I hear they're gonna give Odell Beckham Jr. one of these so he can get out of New York as quick as possible. I think he's going to the Browns, actually. Sort of magic happens. I don't care what you say. It's a dirge. Well, actually, technically it's a Ram now, but. Kentucky Derby edition, sure, why not? Cummins, it's American for diesel. So here, here's Dodge's air suspension. They're using on the, uh, the new 1500s. I mean, it's pretty sophisticated. I hate to have to fix it when it breaks, but. Oh, this is your old plastic lines. It's kind of cool, kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah man, Longhorn. There's 500. That's a sleek looking dually. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it. Dodge has the best looking trucks. That's all there is to it. I'm not saying there's necessarily anything wrong with uh, Chevy, and Ford is making their trucks out of tin cans now, so. Dodge has the best looking trucks. No doubt about it. Look at this guy. Yeah, man. Those bead lockers. I wonder if it comes from the factory with bead lockers. Must, right? Huh, what, what model is this? Oh, look how mean that looks. Come on. Mopar modified. All right, so it doesn't come from the factory with the bead lockers, but I guess that's a Mopar part you can get. I dig it. What should look like inside? Got a hell of a lot of screens and shit in there. You really need all that crap, but it's in there for you. This is our homeland. This is our pilgrimage. This is why we're here. Oh, that, and a seven passenger Subaru apparently. Shut up. Let's go! <laughs> Here's the JL Wrangler. You can see headlights. Real weird. Turn signals are LED. They're back on the fender like the uh, TJ. The front of it looks a lot like the um, like the JK, except that's a little weird. I guess they had to make something bigger or something. Uh, still got same old Wrangler. Hood latches. I mean, it's it's very similar. The most important thing, and why the Wrangler will always be the best, right there. Solid front axle. It's all the difference in the world. So the fun thing about these Jeeps nowadays, there's hidden little Jeep logos from like the old school Army Jeeps. So you got one there, you got one around the windshield. They're all just hidden everywhere. So you can find another one. You got another one on that wheel. Got another one on that wheel. So the back of it, I mean, it looks like a Wrangler, but it also doesn't look like any other Wrangler. You got some real complicated taillights. I guess that was necessary. Uh, yeah, they'll be they'll be one of the first things you break off on a tree if you actually try to take this thing off road. I'm intrigued about the new chassis at the top. Yeah, some kind of weird new unibody. It's not the uh, tube uh, roll cage anymore. It's all integral. Yeah, your speakers on the roof up there. Inside looks very similar. I mean, outside it looks similar. It's just little things, you know? Small, little things. They, they basically made everything more complicated. Look at the fuel door. In case you were confused, it says fuel. That's good. 
I didn't want to accidentally put apple juice in there. Here's the two-door JL. I've heard a lot of people uh, very concerned that they're gonna do away with the two-door Wrangler. I can't imagine that they would do that. I, I could be wrong, but I would be astounded if they ever tried to get rid of the uh, two-door Wrangler. Like I said, you can see, they just made, they took the JK and they made everything more complicated. They just added a few extra lines and cut-ins and, I don't know, guess is good. I haven't, uh, haven't heard of anybody who's driven it yet to know whether or not it handles much different. Of course, all the usual options are available, lockers and everything. We saw that out front before. Not a bad looking vehicle. Here's what we should be getting excited about. Turbo Jeeps coming to town. Two liter turbo diesel. <laughs> I'm all about that. Give me, give me a WJ with one of these in it. <laughs> and I will be happy for life. All right, here we go. This is the inside of the compass. Oh man, it's pretty comfy. I mean, granted, we're in the Trailhawk. This is the most upgraded version, but I'm gonna say there's a lot of leg room. I mean, the seat's pretty close considering. Where yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely comfortable up front. Look at all the freaking buttons. It's like driving spaceship. What do you need all these buttons for? Here you go. This is where the magic happens. Uh, this is like the new select track, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you got hill descent mode. Yeah, your four-wheel lock. I think the Trailhawk has some sort of lockers. And then, of course, down here you can choose what you are driving on, and it will uh, adjust the ride accordingly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you got all your, your regular accoutrements. Everything's coming with a USB thing now. Here's one thing I hate. All new cars are coming with freaking electronic parking brakes. Yeah, they're kind of annoying because if your battery's dead, you have an issue getting stuff undone. Uh, I don't, I mean, you know how we feel about it. Old school, look at, there's no gauges anymore. You know, I was, like, I was talking about it in one of the videos the other day. You don't get gauges in anything anymore. You got your speedometer and you got your tachometer and that's it. No oil pressure, no uh, engine temp. It's all dummy gauges. Uh, that's a heck of a uh, nav system it's got though. I could, I could daily something like this. I guess I could, I wouldn't want the leather, but it's funny now that the JL's out, the JK kind of looks classic. It's weird, right? Got a whole heck of a lot of lights, but like bone stock tires. I don't really know what this thing's for. But... Oh, the ultimate road trip vehicle. Oh, look at that, Pringles. Sponsored by Super 8. <laughs> yeah, we customize it. Huh. So we inside like all of our furnishings. We've got on-demand coffee in the middle, along with a little mini fridge. On-demand coffee? What does that mean? Yeah, it's a Keurig maker. Oh, you got a Keurig in the Jeep? In, yeah. Can I see it? Can I open the door? Is that okay? Yeah. You don't mind? So this side, you just see, like, that's where the cure maker is. That's pretty awesome. This is where you put the water, and the other side is sure. where you put the cake cups. I totally get that. <laughs> I would love to have a Keurig in my Jeep. Right. Super we changed, H. like, paneling. Real wood trim. I know it's got, like, um, some tailgate seats back here, space for, like, clothes and camping equipment. That's pretty cool. The road trip. We're trying to position ourselves as, like, road trip friendly. Absolutely. Yeah, you take your Super 8 Jeep, you stay at a Super 8, you go see America. It's a beautiful thing, I dig it. Screw you, Nissan. <laughs> Look at this tank. To be honest. Oh, wait, National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Fund. All right, I was about to make fun of it for being a mall crawler, but now I'll leave it alone. What do we got here? We got GT500 that looks like a 2011 and you got like 95 97 cobra 2003 2004 cobra which they've nicknamed the terminator because of the whipple supercharger and it kills people 32 valve v8 running about 340 foot pounds of torque almost 400. sounds like he knows what he's talking about doesn't he we got a little camaro over here looks like an ss this is where i'm a little different i know that's camaro ss got that one <laughs> they pretty all right i don't okay guys I don't know if you see that from here. I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit. Do you see what I'm seeing on those little <laughs> wheels? Really? Really? That's real. You know what you see? That's what you see on the strip down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Yeah. Against Myrtle Rolling Beach, the night. That's exactly what you see. Yeah. We got some cool cars Camaro. over here. Got your little IROC in the behind there. Heck yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Make cars like this. Put a giant V8. And just go fun. Lexus. When you want a Toyota, but you want to spend as much as possible. Acura, it's Japanese for expensive Honda. Infinity, still the best way to show off that new promotion to middle management. Okay guys, so here's that Lincoln I was talking about that shares a bunch of stuff with the Mustang. So if you guys don't know, this is the new Lincoln Aviator that Lincoln is launching right now. 
So it's got um, all bigger but same design style Mustang suspension underneath it. And then it shares two motors with the Mustang. It's the EcoBoost motor and the 5 Coyote, uh, which are both great motors. The EcoBoost is pretty efficient on fuel and still has a lot of power. And the V8 is just, the, e the Coyote 5.0 is an amazing motor. It's got 400 horsepower, all, all natural aspirated. It's an amazing car. Uh, they also apparently offer a plug-in hybrid version of this, as you can see over there. But I wouldn't mind trying to take a drive in this SUV that handles really well. Um, yeah, it looks really cool. It's sleek, looks big, looks comfy. It's got some funky seats in it. I don't know if you saw it when it was spinning before, but it's got some weird, like, love handle holders, I would call them. Yeah. But yeah, no, cool looking car. I'd like to see how it drives one day. Want to know why it's so dark over here at the Land Rover exhibit? Because as always, Land Rover is in Jeep's shadow. All right, this is the only reason Eric got out of bed, got on a train, and followed me to the city today. Let's go look at some new Subarus. All right, here's the new Fozzie. According to, uh, according to Eric, it's supposed to be roomier and uh, supposed to be more leg room. And uh, we're not really seeing it. My mother has a 2012. Your brother had a 2000 what, right? 12? Nine, no, nine. 2009. I don't know. It looks about the same to me. Still nice though. I love Foresters, man. Bro, do you even vape? Yeah, this is what Eric's been talking about for goddamn weeks. Apparently a seven passenger Subaru. Excuse me. There it is. Three full rows of seats. Yes, I mean it kind of just looks like a Forester that they bumped the back out on. I'm sure that's what it is, right? It's just bumped out and wider, but it's on their new global platform, which is being produced all over the world. That's a big thing. What this and it's a Boxer 6? No, it's actually a 2.5 liter turbo. 2.5 turbo. So this thing's basically an STI is what you're saying. Well, I wouldn't say it has that much power, but it has a lot. It's basically an STI. You heard it here, seven passenger STI. For wrong blame, Eric. Forrester Sport. You know things get good when you add sport to the name. I dig it. I like the paint job. Pretty crazy. Let's check on this interior right here. Lots of orange. All right, so apparently the Sport has some kind of X mode. You can choose uh, oh, snow and drift. There you go. Mud, normal, and of course, paddle shifters because Sport. All right, what are we saying about this back window? Well, back in 98, in the older, like 2003 box, they had big back windows once below the back seat. And I gotta say, they brought it back, right. something I really like to see. For short people, you wanna see that. Oh yeah, they're opening up the back window again. I dig it, it does look a little, uh, I like little, the back of this one. Yeah, this, that's a good different. look. Foresters, the front grill actually activates to perform better gas mileage. What does that mean, it closes it? There's louvers here and here and here. And the behind it that closed down on a highway so all the airflow goes around the bumper. No kidding. I hate to go, fix Subaru. It. I hate to fix it, but it's a Yeah, right? This is uh, Subaru's resident clown car, the uh what is it, the Crosstrek, XV, something or another? Just kidding, I like it. It is tiny though. It's reminiscent of the old Forester. Yeah, it's tiny like the old Outback Sports. I dig it. All their cars got so big, it's kind of cool that they got a, a little uh Little jumper like that still. Uh, we're trying to get to Dodge, but we have to walk through Kia. God dang it. Friggin' Kias. Hamster life! A couple more Chevys. Okay, I'm alright with it. I like Chevy. They do some weird stuff like that HHR and uh at least they're still making V8s though. Freaking Ford fell off that wagon a while ago. I know I'm being hard on Ford, but they do some weird stuff. This is the guy right here. The Colorado ZR2. I've seen some of these things, like uh, guys take stock ones, go hit up Moab. I would love that. This thing is gnarly. Yeah, it definitely is. Sorry about that. I'm all about it. I just wish you could get a solid front axle. I, I think they're better. No, it doesn't. I wish you could get one, but you can't. If you want a solid front axle these days, you gotta buy a heavy duty pickup truck, or you have to buy a Jeep Wrangler. I'm gonna get flack for this, but I think they screwed that thing up. I don't like the new Camaros at all. The Fords look a lot better, and the Challengers look infinitely better. But he's over here oogling this uh, Corvette. Here's my problem with Corvette. Corvette is the reason that the Grand National had to go away. 
Corvette is the reason that uh, cars like the Firebird always got detuned, and uh, that um, what was it? That that two-door uh, Cadillac they made got detuned because nothing could be faster than the Corvette. A lot of good cars had to die so that the Corvette could keep being number one. And I don't find that cool at all. Huh, a little cool. Oh yeah, guys, it's the dirge. You guys want to see my new dirge? Oh god, come on, man. How 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 do other car companies even bother showing up when Dodge is bringing a lineup like this? Seriously. If I was another car company and I saw Dodge unloading all these cars from the truck, I would have just packed up and went home. Look how mean this thing looks. Oh my god. It's the Damon. Got the Daytona back. Oh yeah. This thing is gnarly looking. SRT, baby. Charger Daytona and. Only 35 grand. I mean, for 370 horse, I dig it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Supercharged Demon V8. That right there is classic American muscle. You can keep your twin turbo V6s. I'll take the 6.2 Hemi. This is the demon box you get whenever you buy a new demon. Comes with all the stuff you need to take it to the track. Literally, when you buy a demon, I believe maybe it's like a, I think it's a one dollar option actually. That's what it is. When you buy a new demon, this is a one dollar option to get the uh, demon box. That's how much Dodge wants you to take this thing to the track. It's a one dollar option when you buy a demon to get this box. It's got the jack you need. Some uh, skinnies for the front. Looks like uh, some kind of compressor. I don't know what's in that box there, but for ninety thousand dollars, you only get to pay a dollar for this box. That's the thing. <laughs> they want you to take it to the track, so it's a one dollar option to get the demon box. My question is, if you buy a demon, how do you get this thing home? <laughs> really right? He's strapping the demon box on the roof. Let's just stand here in awe of this beautiful. Guys, right. I don't know if Joe respects that on. This is $85,000 out of the box, 9.56 quarter mile drag race car. That's all it was built for, all it's meant for is going a quarter mile at a time, as Vin Diesel would say. He lives his life as a quarter mile at a time. Well, this, that's what this car is doing. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a stock Challenger, but they put wider tires on it, so to make it street legal, they had to put those uh, fender flares on it, so the wheelbase is actually wider than a normal stock uh, Challenger non-demon version. Oh yeah, and uh, aren't those intakes yes. in the front? The headlights are intakes, yeah, the which in you actually see in a lot of drags through these days. The middle two headlights are not headlights, they are intakes. It is quite an impressive piece of machinery. I would love to drive them one day. It'd probably be my last day living on Earth, but if you love yeah. to drive it. Oh man, this car is just gorgeous. That's what I'm saying. So you are Ford, you are Chevy, and you see Dodge unloading a bunch of these things at the car show. How do you not pack up and just go home? Game over, man. Game over. Right there's my favorite of the lever, the Demon. Right? I'll tell you what. I can stare at it all day, and I just might. I want to see the, uh, check out the interior here. Oh, down. Uh, kind of. I believe one of the options is to get no back seats. That has no back seat. No. Yeah, there's no back seats. But in it, who's gonna sit back there anyway? And it, it has AC, but the AC isn't for the occupants. The AC isn't it? Uh, cool down the intake. Yeah, it's an intake cooler. That's what the AC is used for. Insanity. But if you look, it's still a drivable car. Oh yeah. You can drive that to the track and drive it. You can daily it. I have no idea where the demon box would go. Like Doug said. Oh, yeah, right. How do you get the demon box home? <laughs> Look at those rear tires. Oh man. Oh man. That's insanity. Alright. If I don't leave now, I'm probably never. Oh wait, we gotta see the back. Let's see the booty. Come on. That. It's just. I gotta say, I like how Dodge brought back something very retro, which is this flat black, basically top section of the car. It's a big thing back in the classic muscle of the car days, and I love that it's back. It's yeah, man, all of the big three tried to tried to do throwbacks 
Ford did okay, Chevy fell on their face, Dodge hit it out of the park, man. This looks just like an old Challenger, just a little bit modernized. Might have to rob a bank on the way home. <laughs> just kidding, I wouldn't rob a bank. The uh, Charger GT, Pentastar V6, all wheel drive. Yeah, for a daily, absolutely. Thing looks mean. Pentastar is a good motor, so they're putting in uh, the new Jeeps. And it's under 30 grand. I want to see and it gets 27 all highway. All wheel drive handles. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about 27 highway. Yeah. I don't believe that for a second, but you can say whatever you want. Yeah, man, I would rock this bad boy. For under 30 grand? For a daily? Absolutely. And they actually hold their value quite well. You try to get one nowadays with all-wheel drive, it's, very, it's still painting eight grand, nine grand. The question is, how hard is it to lift if it's all-wheel drive? There you go. So you get the Charger, or the Challenger. And uh, this will be the, uh, the soccer practice car. That's the uh, 392 Durango SRT. Four wheel or uh, all wheel drive. This looks pretty mean, not gonna lie. I mean, if I'm buying an SUV, you know I'm getting a Grand Cherokee, but still, that boy looks pretty mean. Got the gnarly Mopar seats. Mopar goes far. Hell yeah. This has more cargo space than the Accent, but the difference is how much wider that Accent is versus a Durango. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, yeah, man. See, now that is really cool. I don't want no leaders. It's me in cubic inches, 392, just like the old days. That's why Dodge is the best. They know how to keep it American. You got the Mopar wall. I guess these are all the Mopar upgrades. I was talking about Mopar in the last video, and there was some confusion on my part, honestly, about where Mopar had started. Somebody filled me in. It started as a, a performance part company called Direct Connection, and then it became Mopar, which I think is just a shortening of motor parts but anyway these are all the Mopar upgrades you got lowering springs don't lower anything well maybe a Challenger I guess is fair you get stage one suspension upgraded sway bars some big friggin Brembo's and then all the different all the different rims you could ever want anybody need a Dodge kickball they got one. <laughs> they got Hemi barbecue sauce. That's freaking awesome. Hemi mustard. <laughs> oh, I want that belt. Look at that belt. Oh, yeah. Mopar everything. VW is German for diesel gate. I'm trying to get to Ford, but I have to walk through this turd parade. Oh. Oh, the Rogue. I really hate Nissans. Yep. I think Honda is. Not old Nissans, of course. But new Nissans? Yep. All right. Enough jerking around. The freaking Ford area is a Honda area. Nice, right? Ferd! There we go, the Bullet Mustang. It's you back got, this year. You got that new Ferd? Um, okay guys, what you got here is the new Ford Bullet Mustang for 2019. This is what Steve McQueen drove back in the day and they designed it after that car. You know from one of the best car chases out there, it's got a crap ton of power, 475 horsepower, 5.0 Coyote motor, beautiful car. They do a lot of different style mods to it, you know, but it, it's just a mean looking Mustang. I wouldn't mind to have it. It's a bit more Ranger Danger. Let's check this thing out. The other one was the quad cab. This is the uh, extended cab. I dig it, man. It's, it's a small truck. FX4 model? I'm trying to get a good picture. Like, it's small enough for today's standards. Absolutely. Of course, it's got that dumb eco boost. They don't just give you a V6 anymore. You get a four cylinder and two turbos. Some people are going to like that. Some people are not. Whatever. I wonder what it can tow. I dig it, though. I think it was. Look at that rear window though. Look how small that is. Like, why bother? Look how tiny that rear window is. I had a Ford and I used to lock my keys in all the time. I kept a screwdriver in the bed so I could just pry open the rear window, but clearly can't do that anymore. Craziest thing about the Ranger, it's got a 10 speed Bruce Jenner. That's where the dead dinosaurs go. That's where the angry pixies go. All right, so I did not know this was a thing. Apparently, there's a company. Uh, that is taking Camaros and turning them into Trans Ams. And I think that is just delightful. 
I uh, I think it's a bummer that Pontiac is gone. And uh, look at that. They even put the five, 455 on there. Oh yeah, man. You see that right there on the shaker hood? These things are freaking cool. Honestly, I'd rather have one of these than the Camaro version. It's just, it is a Camaro. It's just, uh, what does it got? Body, body kit. Obviously you got the Hoosiers on there. Different motor? No, it's the same motor, but it worked the hell out. Yeah, it worked out, so it's quick. And then of course, all the Trans Am badging. I dig it, man. This is a cool thing. I'm glad people do stuff like this. I miss Pontiac. Look at that blue one. Oh yeah, that guy is awesome. I like shaker hoods too. Can't go wrong with a shaker hood. Trans Am, baby. I guess the company is called Trans Am Worldwide. T-A-W. Works for me. Oh, Brembo, the best of the best. Apparently with these Brembos, I've seen them online and on TV before, there's actually tension lines that go between the bolts and you can like tweak how the brakes react to braking. It's, it's pretty crazy. wild. Some I crazy uh, rally stuff. Yeah, I haven't had anything fancy enough to play with that yet, but I like it. Alright guys, we are back in Eric's Outback, driving back from the train station in good old Morristown, New Jersey. Uh, the car show was awesome. Primo Vera. Uh, looking at them new Jeeps, seeing how capable the new Trailhawks are, I'm, I was blown away at what that Renegade, Compass, and Cherokee were doing. You expect the Grand Cherokee and obviously the Wrangler to be able to kill it, but the way that comp... Forget about it. Y'all saw the video. You know. Uh, Seven passenger Subaru, a little bit disappointing. Yeah. Just kind of underwhelming, right? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't anything I was hoping for. It didn't have a lot of cargo space. Had a lot of room. I'll say that. Like you had room people for room, which yeah, it's a people carrier, but I'm looking for the all-around package where I don't have to put a cargo rack on back or throw shit on top. I think we were secretly hoping for a Suburban with a Subaru logo on it. Pretty much. That's pretty much yeah. where I was looking. Didn't for. get it. Uh that new Subaru Forester though. That's I, like, I like what they did with it. It's, a, it's minor styling things, but real mint. Uh, yeah, the one thing I was definitely happy about was that the whole car show was not about electric cars. I was really worried that that was like what they were going to be pushing. And there were definitely plenty out there if you uh, were so inclined to find them. But it wasn't it wasn't overwhelming. As somebody who enjoys, uh, you know, the, the smell of burning gas, um, very happy to see that. All right, guys, so the car show was definitely a success. Uh, I'm excited for next year. Can't yeah. wait to see what 2019 is about. Uh, hopefully you found the video uh, educational, entertaining, maybe even a little amusing. If you did, by all means, hit that like button. Leave us a comment down there in the squawk boxes. Let us know what you thought about the cars out there. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace out.